so person na i'm chandan okay i have around 8 years of experience in ui automation and uh, api automation soap ui i have experience for 3 years in working in soap ui mostly soap ui uh but since you want to learn ready api as, as well right uh, yeah. so ready api has a paid license so so if we decided to, if you decided to go ahead with the course so we will be covering uh, ready api first so that we can cover all the ready api topics uh, within the trial period and then move to the free version and uh, uh, then move to the groovy consoles and writing scripts in groovy okay okay uh so i'm uh i'm just sharing my screen before i do that can you give me your background like what kind of experience you have what do you, uh, what kind of things you wanted to learn why you are choosing this course so that i can sure hmm. so um I, i'm also a qa professional i have uh, more than 15 years of experience and um, currently i am playing a lead to manager kind of role um so i have used uh, several other tools uh, uh, i have i have done some uh, you know um last couple of years uh, it's pretty much into you know leadership and you know management and not into the technical side so my technical side is kind of you know um loose these days so i, I want to get into that uh, because of my new project uh, so for the new project it's i i want the hands on you know uh, soap ui uh, this project is pretty much into the api so i have i know i have used uh, swagger in my previous project and a uh, little bit of a postman but i never played with soap ui um so these guys are uh, you know uh, they already started with soap ui and uh, eventually uh, they are uh, buying the license of uh, for the ready api uh, which is you know soap ui pro uh, so with that uh, uh, they will do the you know automation piece um that is where you know i i, I might need the, the project support also so these guys means your team members right uh yeah my project yes okay okay so do you currently do you have the uh, soap ui license no Or i don't have but I, oh, but i have okay. uh, installed uh, the free version 5.5 okay okay cool okay so my you know the immediate requirement is uh, soap ui because it is already started so pure free version right yes okay cool uh, so uh, i did not get you so if you have any experience in programming like any programming language uh not that much in you know recently but i have played some time back uh, selenium with uh, java uh, but uh never touched yeah, for yeah, four yeah. years yeah so basically uh, we need um, like variable functions and classes knowledge because in soap ui i will be using lot of groovy scripting okay, okay. so soap ui doesn't support anything else uh, apart from groovy so everything has to be written in groovy so sometimes uh, the things which is not possible through soap ui tool or ready api tool then we have to do that things using groovy Okay. Okay. Give me, give, let's give you an example. Let's say you have to generate a unique name or a random name that is not possible through SOAP UI elements or Ready API elements. For that, you have to write a Groovy script. Okay. okay. So sometimes these kind of things need some Groovy scripting. Otherwise, uh, the things which is let's say if you compare with Postman, in Postman you have endpoint, you have headers, you have body, right? so all these things are also present in soap ui okay soap ui provides an http request step where you can supply endpoint you can supply body you can supply header and you can test that right yeah a difference difference between a ready api means the paid version and the free version is you get lot of stuff in paid version in free version you have to write lot of script for that okay so let's say okay. reporting is not present in uh, free version okay if you want to see what was the result how many test cases passed failed what is the percentage what is the error in those so this is not present in free version if you want to have it you have to write a reporting utility in groovy okay. 
but okay. in ready api it is already present okay okay, okay. second thing is so uh, if you have sopi open you will see sopi looks like this yeah okay this is a paid version sorry free version and this is a paid version okay okay so this is called one second this is called the groovy console where we write scripts the second difference between soap ui and post uh, sorry free and paid is so in paid version you actually just do the right click and call anything like you can get any variable data using let's say i want to get this data okay so it created a variable store the value of test suit real variable in the contract id without writing any code right i did yeah. not wrote this code mm -hmm. i just uh, used the ready api steps now this is not possible in free free version see yeah so here you actually have to write code def contract id and context so auto completion etc is not there for auto completion we can use eclipse for groovy programming but again in eclipse also you won't be having these kind of functionality because eclipse will not understand context and text runner right this is especially uh, specific to soap ui okay. so these kind of these kind of different we have in free and paid version so in uh, ready api there is also you can see the report so i'll give you an example so uh, the soap uh, ready api looks like this there are reporting icons available if you see soap ui there is no icon available right so reporting is mm -hmm. by default is not available there okay what is that icon for the bug so that is uh... Uh, that is actually a creating bug in jira so they have integrations also oh, uh, okay. that is not possible so you can directly create uh, issues in jira using ready api so yeah. you see this kind of report there is a html version report also available right so here you see we have run 15 cases 14 failed this is a sample we will creating all that so this is the difference between both of them let's talk about the course content now mm -hmm. right <coughs> so uh, as i have said groovy is needed in this okay uh, so we don't know where we need groovy okay so uh, we will be starting with groovy and api basics of api testing if you know about this we can skip that otherwise we can run about that right Mm -hmm. so i assume that people are starting from scratch and if people already knows let's say basics of api they know what is method type how to what is the status code how to request how to get the response and so on it is not needed otherwise we can do that we will okay, start so from there but uh, i will let you know you know when you start uh, then we can uh, skip uh, anyway whatever. anyway this is not a long session we we'll, we we'll complete this in in a half an hour also that's it oh, okay so okay. even if you know it you can just go through it push up the concept right mm -hmm. so groovy we will uh, set up installation of we we'll write a simple program in groovy uh, we will learn about variables and uh, literals methods classes string arrays and collections okay that's it we won't go in detail because we don't need much coding experience in soap ui mostly the things are already there right okay okay now when we uh, cover this here here we will be converting our so uh, we will be taking this website uh, if you have any website which we can use i am comfortable with that also but mostly i use this public website is one of my previous company the website is public and we can do anything in this so there will be no complication so we i generally use this website for the classes 
but if you have your website or you can we can use your website i am comfortable with that also so here we will be actually creating the scenarios live scenarios like logging in creating build card viewing dashboard updating user profile and so on we'll capturing all those apis through google network console mm -hmm. and And once we have that, we will try to cover. So we'll try to convert this API into SOAP UI. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the SOAP UI looks like this. So the upper, the uppermost section is called project. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, then these are resources. Resources means these are API endpoints. If you see, see these are API endpoints. Right. Of course, this will differ project by project, but I'm just giving an example. Okay. Uh, this is suit test suit. Okay. Yeah. So under yeah. test suit, we have multiple test cases. These are all test cases, and under test cases, we have multiple test steps. So this is basically same as the manual test cases. Now under test steps, we can add multiple test steps. Okay, these are the available test steps. Rest request. Right. So we mostly use HTTP request for our web UI, web API testing. Right. We can also mm -hmm. connect our uh, SOAP UI console to JDBC uh, databases. Uh, for example, we can query MySQL databases through this. Okay. So here okay. we will just create connection and then we can run SQL queries and return. So sometimes in databases we need to verify. So let's say I am creating a contact, right? So once I create a contact, I need to verify that the count of contact, uh, number of contact count in databases has increased by one, right? So for that, before creating contact, I hit my select query, select all contact, select count contact from contact table. Let's say that it isn't 20. And then I create a contact using API. And after that, I will verify that the after uh, hitting the query again, I'm getting the count as 21. So my assertion will be count is equal to count plus one. Okay, old count okay. plus one. New count is equal to old count, old count plus one. Okay. okay? So uh, you can do that using this. Let me uh, let me so pause you there for a second, okay? Um, so I, you know, it would be great if I have you know SQL kind of database. Uh, in my previous project, we had uh, you know Jira and you know um, SQL and uh, you know that type of uh, environment. But uh, unfortunately, in this one, uh, the database is LDAP. And we don't have Jira. We have all the IBM tools like you know CM um, and uh, uh, you know kind of all all tools. Um, is there is there any possibility to integrate whatever the bugs that we are finding uh, into CM CLM? I mean. Okay, so this is possible in paid version, not here. Uh, uh, I don't know which which uh, which bug tracking tool are you using? CLM. I don't think CLM has their integration. These are the all integration present. I don't think so. It has integration with Git, Jira, all these JDBC drivers. Also, this is. I I haven't heard of CLM. This is an internal tool or what? No, uh, this is this uh, this tool is uh, heavily using uh, which are integrated with you know the federal government uh, projects. Oh, so maybe then what you can do basically you have to write a Groovy script to call this. So this. Uh, tool should have some APIs, right, to create issues. I think so because uh, yeah. So the, uh, the the workaround could be that what you can do after the test case phase. Let's say I'm adding some assertions. 
and if some test cases fail i can hit this api using uh, groovy scripting to create an issue are you getting my point what i'm trying to say so no, this is this can be one work around no idea oh wait So, uh, can you test create issue of this tool using uh, Postman? No. Like, can you uh, do that? No. No. So, only the SOAP UI is uh, given the permission for this one. No, no, no. I'm saying, if are you able to uh, like create issue through API using this tool? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You mean you mean the, the bugs creating the using bugs, this tool? Yeah, but. I'm not talking uh, about UI. Can you can you create that using API, the bugs? I don't think so. Oh, so that is a problem, man. Then. So yeah, it will be difficult. If you have an API, you can what you can do is basically after the test case fail, you can add a step here, HTTP request step, and where you can hit the the bug tracking tool API to create issue. So, but if you are a, not able to create a, that using API, sorry. In, in a way, in a way, if we can access any API uh, to the bug back tracking tool uh, within the SOAP UI, then we are fine, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. If if you have an API, you can access that through SOAP UI. Then you can create issue. Then you can update issue. You can do whatever you want. But you need API because SOAP UI is all about API. That part I will check and let you know. Yeah. Okay, so I was here. Why? Where was I? Uh, I was showing you some steps. Um, right. One what are thing. different steps we have? One more thing. Have you have you heard about LDAP, Lightweight Directory Access Protocol? I heard about it, but haven't worked on it. Yeah, that is where uh, our data will be saved. Pretty much the API mm -hmm. responses are not. So that is where we need to, uh, you know verify uh, whether the data is saved uh, with the post or put call or data is changed and you know maybe to get call uh, um, to verify you know the table level okay th this data is actually available and you know that type of uh, verification we'll have to use the LDAP okay can you like show me how you do it manually then I can suggest some ways uh, I don't have like right now, not right now when when we start the course we can definitely find a way okay okay, okay. so I need to sh see it because uh, uh, my SQL MongoDB I know right I have worked on it so for LDAP I have to see it like how do you guys do manually then we can find a way either in Groovy or in uh, ready API I don't think so I provides default integration with LDAP but I think I think Ready API does. Okay. Okay. So we can we can like so I have to like also do the R and D on that because I haven't seen many people using LDAP, mm -hmm. and also I haven't worked on it LDAP yet. I've worked on Couchbase, uh, MongoDB, and uh, SQL databases. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but we can find a way. Okay. Everything is available, I guess. Okay. Oh, yeah. So I was showing you the elements with SOAP UI have. So, uh, right now, uh, do these guys uh, verifying data on uh, LDAP, right? Yes, they do manually. <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, JDBC step, uh, we talked about it. Uh, it doesn't have MongoDB step, but for MongoDB we can write query. Uh, let me show you one of the MongoDB example.
So uh, this is how you can access MongoDB data. Okay, so you get connection. These are the connection. Uh, we write this in a project level. After creating connection, you hit query. So you can hit query like this, where employee ID is this, cross amount is this, and so on. Can you can you uh, zoom a little bit uh, your browser? Yeah. I don't think you can zoom much more than that because this is Groovy console inside SOAP UI. If you just try not to working. Control, control press. Yeah, control, control press is not working. No, no, not working. Because I, I can't read anything. Mm. So what I can do, I can copy paste and increase the font size can't you increase the font, font, font size in the soap UI no the free version doesn't have it I don't think the paid version also does that okay can you see now yeah <laughs> yeah so I saying uh, Creating a MongoDB connection, then hitting the query, getting the data data from database, and then verifying it. So this is for MongoDB, and I'm sure you can do that using for LDAP also. We have to just figure out or do the R and D how to connect to LDAP using Ruby, and then we can do that, right? So all this importing uh, part uh, uh, to connect the connect with the MongoDB or for different to to call different classes or something like that no this is basically I'm getting all the Mongo so Mongo user so con for connection we need something Mongo user IP password DB name right so I'm getting it from project level this is project level the username property so in uh, SOAP UI we have properties at different levels like project then test suit and test case then test step Okay, properties, nothing is basically variables. We have, like, you heard of global variables and local variables, right? Yeah. In programming. Mm -hmm. So, in here, we have uh, project level variables, test route level variables, test case level variables, and test step level variables. So, I'm, what I'm, I'm fetching these values here. Okay. Once I have done that, I'm using Mongo credential class to create connection using these values. Okay. Once yeah. that is done, I'm creating a query to hit, okay, with employee ID this, append means and uh, gross amount this, right? Uh, right? Once that is done, I'm hitting that query and then getting the database, the thing getting the results here. Collection dot find. So in MongoDB, you can find a, a command to find anything, right? Uh, collection dot find using this query shorted by order by date and limit by one okay this is my query now I got the data in cursor I'm I'm doing a while the cursor has data JSON is equal to cursor dot date so in uh, MongoDB or temples data is written in JSON format so I'm getting that JSON which we need okay then I converting that JSON into readable format using Slooper this is a library provided by uh, Slooper and this is also we use that to pass JSON data in SOAP UI. Once that is done, I'm I'm passing that result <coughs> in result field. Okay, and then after that, I'm applying assertions like expected time should be this this one. Result dot drop pay amount should be the lump sum of the amount. You will not understand this term, but these are project specific. But you get the gist, right? Okay. So this is a MongoDB connection and so that, data from MongoDB. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 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 that part is uh, from the free version, right? In in paid version, also you have to write query. This is not possible like that. Uh, like just provide a query. I think in paid version, right? They have made some update, and I think this is available now. Let's see. Yeah. 
no JDBC only. Yeah, no, we have to, uh, JDBC only connection is present right now. If you see, this is JDBC and let's see the drivers. We have JDBC, we have RJ, JDBC again, JDBC, JDBC. ODBC, SQL Server, DDS, MySQL, Oracle, yeah. No, not possible through paid also in uh, oh, MongoDB. So you have to write same query and same uh, programming language, oh, sorry, programming script. And this is basically, uh, if you if you have worked on Java, it is same as Java in Groovy also. So all these classes are present in Java also, Mongo Credential, Mongo, Mongo Connect, DB Object. So if somebody has worked on Java, will understand all that, right? Yeah. So but, my point was, we, if something is not present in SOAP UI or Ready API, we can achieve that using Mongo. Sorry, using Groovy script. That was my point. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So these type of you know, especially uh, the things into the programming, right? Uh, you're gonna give me kind of a, a refresh to uh, Java and whatever the classes and all those, right? Uh, uh, I'm gonna give you the refresh to Groovy. Actually, this is actually Groovy. So this section is completely covered. That. Okay. Okay. So we will be using Eclipse to write programming, uh, like basic program, then functional analytic program, inter inter uh, class level programs, collection level programs, and so on. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is about that. So we talked about Groovy step. So in properties, you understand these are called variables. Property transfer. So we can transfer. Let's say we have two APIs request, mm -hmm. and we want to like get something from response, and that set some that and then set that response data to next request, right? Uh, so take an example, if you have login API, you log in with the username, password, and then after login, you get an authentication token, right? And mm -hmm. then you you use this authentication token in forward request, right? Every other request after login. Mm -hmm. So for that, we have property transfer. Like you can transfer value from one request to other request, okay? Can we, can we quickly do a kind of an example? Yeah, okay. Um, yes. is, is there, can I share, share my screen? Okay. Uh, hold on. Yes. Let me stop myself, then I can, you can share. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yes. Um, this is some other API. Um, so, oh, I had that project, I think, somewhere. Alright, if not, I will show you what I wanted. Uh, so it's something like this. Um, so your API I, is I, JSON based or XML based? We are using both. Most of the time, JSON. So, yeah, yeah, so uh, so API supports both. No issues there. Yeah. So um, th this a. Uh, this is my previous project, uh, but I want to know uh, from that point of view also. So th this is this is our saga, okay? Uh, so as you mentioned, uh, the first point is uh, you know uh, to uh, create the session, right? Uh, so for that, uh, if I call uh, no, this is uh, API, right? Yeah, yeah. So no, in this you can directly test without any. So I I told you about creating a session for fetching data from databases. You can hit API directly with HTTP request. Uh, okay, my, my issue is uh, not through the uh, Saga, through the SOAP oh. UI, right? Uh, so when I create a session, okay, let me, like I can uh, just create an empty project, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah.
and uh, so for this one uh, so I can add a new rest as a service URI uh, uh, as that uh, no, no, no. Add, add, add a test suit first uh, I think you added test suit no add this a test suit right? then test case this is project right so add a test suit then test case and then under that test step the test step you can add as uh, HTTP request. New test suit. You see the there is a thing called new set test suit. Yeah, in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Now under that test suit, add a test case. Uh, now I add a test step, uh, let's say HTTP request. Okay. Any name? Any name, yeah. Now uh, add endpoint. endpoint. The whole endpoint? Yeah. Okay, the vote. okay, and after that we can change that in the detail. Yeah, I don't think this is required. Okay, now just uh, convert that swagger thing in here. Uh, change the method based on that. Change the request URL based on that. And if you have any uh, JSON value or body data, you can provide as a parameter. This is a query oh. parameter. So if you have anything in query, uh, query you understand query parameter. It is basically question mark equal to. I don't think you have anything that. Can you show me uh, like, yeah, what is? So this is a parameter. So it's I guess, something right? like this. Yeah, all these are parameters. Yeah. Yeah. So session. So parameter name is session data. Uh, can yeah. you can you uh, hit it and show me the correct? Uh, how does it work right now? In Swagger. Just show so. Me. <laughs> yeah. Once you create the session over here. So you you have the session of the authentication created, right? So then you can call any uh, any endpoint. Any API, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I wanted to do. Uh, it's the same thing. Uh, let's say for an example, once I just need to uh, create a session in SOAP UI and uh, then call a member using let's say simple get call. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I can do. I think you can do that. So just show me the session API. Okay, so this is the endpoint. Application type JSON. Okay. Yeah. So just copy this session data. Uh, copy that and uh, parameter name is so add a parameter name is session data okay uh, make sure that uh, the name is same as you have there i think session d is capital and no space yeah yeah, yeah and paste uh, the value in value Value in uh, the JSON format, same, same like yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, fine, fine, yeah. Okay. 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 And, and now uh, change the media type, media type to JSON, application JSON. Over here, the response uh, editor? No, 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 just, just below that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, run it? Yeah, I think you can try. Okay. So what you got message you got something serial data is null or empty what does that mean serial that data means, or session data no serial data i don't understand this term. this is specific to your project what does that mean uh no simply if you are creating a session you just get the uh, session id no if this error what this error means uh, this is simply when you are not providing uh, in the correct way, um, you get this one. Okay. 
<laughs> can you uh, check that uh, post query parameter there is a checkbox uh, just uh, right beside uh, media type lower 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 yeah and uh, hit that after hitting this which one uh, the the post query string uh, there is uh, this is just beside media type application json this one okay yeah can you hit it yeah and run it again yeah error in deserialization the mm. object of type is there a way i can uh, control uh yeah so i can give you the control right uh... something here Can you ask uh, for the control? Because I don't see that I can give any control over here. Do you see any message or kind of thing? To give control? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you open uh, the Swagger portal? Yes. I want to see the logs. Logs of the Swagger? Logs of Swagger, yeah. I don't think so. You can see the logs over here. No, just open the portal. I think we can. Uh, logs mean I think what, what request was sent, what was the parameter and so on. So, can you see my screen now? Yeah, yeah. But I still see SOP. I just opened Swagger portal. Yeah, you already opened there. Uh, but I can only see SOP screen. Where is your... People only see you up or screen. Why? How about now? Yeah, yeah, I can see now. Yeah. Okay. Can you copy this? The whole thing? Yeah. And uh, go to SOAP right now. Yeah. Yeah, can you select uh, JSON here? Yeah? Okay. Paste value here. Yeah. Okay, remove from there. Yeah, there you go. Okay. And okay, uh, so, so I thought it is the parameter, but it is actually a body. Okay. 
so if you are if you want to uh, use as parameter then you will have to separate give as parameters right one by one yeah yeah i think okay. uh, sometimes you need to say set value like pagination is equal to uh, page is equal to one items equal to 10 uh, sometimes we get uh, using pagination the api uses pagination then you have to supply these parameters um i didn't get that part anyways uh, so so once you create yeah, the you. once you create the session right so now uh, i want to call any uh, endpoint api here right so if i try to call this api okay okay so you need session right or you want yes. that you want to do that automatically rather than uh, supplying those values right yeah, well, I mean, it, after create the session, I, I should be able to uh, call any API, uh, any other API, right, uh, in this uh, in this tenant. Yeah, but how do you use that session ID, which you got in these APIs? Do that, you use somewhere? I mean, I mean, in the Swagger, once you uh, create the authentication and have the session, you can call any API, right? But I want to know how can I... Uh, pass that uh, whatever the created uh, generated uh, ID right uh, to other to call any other API so for that I think uh, either we add it in session sorry headers right in some headers we write so I want to see uh, can you hit other some other API it's okay no issues we'll find a way okay it's just that I have to go office now. It's 10 a.m. in Indonesia already. Oh, you are so, in Indonesia? I'm from India right now in Indonesia. It's not for some project. Okay. Can I ask one last question, very quick, quick one, <laughs> about the assertions? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, not the automation, right? For the manual testing, you can add, uh, you know, valid contains, you know, um, SLA that type of validation right mm -hmm. uh, what exactly uh, in SOAP UI what exactly what point we, we use assertions and uh, what point we do the kind of what point we use the programming other than the uh, already given assertion like this yeah like mostly you, yeah mostly we use this one but this is only present either for HTTP request step or XML request step. What happens you are, when you are hitting a step using Groovy? Okay. Then in that case, these are not available assertions. So in that case, you need to use Groovy assertions, which I've shown you in MongoDB step if you've seen. Right? Okay. So when you are using a Groovy step, you need to use uh, assertion, uh, Groovy's assertion class. Otherwise, when you are using a HTTP request step or this JDBC request step or XML step, you can use these assertions. Okay, because my in the manual part, uh, I need to know you know uh, many assertion types and you know using of that. Yeah, since you are getting late, uh, let's uh, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. So it will be a long session, man. Okay, I, okay. at least 10 to 15 hours. So we will get to all these things. Cool, cool. All right, okay. Yeah. All right, man. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for everything. Okay. Bye then. All right. Thanks. Bye.